So in part two, you saw the dominant seventh, the minor seven, the major seven, and the minor major seven, which are really the, the chords that are used in uh, jazz and rock and pop, but it's that's the sort of mainstay of it. So now I'm gonna add, start adding notes. So let's just refresh our memory. C major is a scale that just has the white notes there. So my C chord is C, E, and G. If I want to add my seven, remember it's the flattened seventh note, gives me my seven there. Now you can keep going up in odd numbers. You can have C9. What's the ninth? We've only got eight notes in our scale. The answer is the ninth is the continuation of that scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there it is. Now, helpfully, the ninth doesn't change in a chord unless it tells you that it's going to change. So C9 would be C7 with the ninth note added. So it sounds even thicker now. It sounds really expensive, an expensive version of your seven. Ooh, missed. Divide the work. There we go. Root and seventh, ninth, and my third and the fifth that were in my main chord of C. Now, C major nine is the same sort of thing. C major seven. Nice. I like that. C minor major nine as I played just now for the James Bond theme in the second part of this video. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. Uh, and then you've got all your other things, uh, C major 9, C minor 9. Notice that the ninth note doesn't change at all, so it's actually quite a nice uh, extra that you don't really have to worry about too much. It's always going to be the same as the second note in your scale. On that subject, it doesn't matter if the ninth, the ninth note actually nestles in with your other notes, like that. It's called the ninth because the seventh has to be there. You can get C add nine. Now what that means is that you have your C, your C chord with just the ninth added, no seventh. Or it's quite a nice way of just flavoring a major chord without having that sort of bluesier touch. That sounds a lot different to. So there's your ninth. Now you can have eleventh as well. You can go up another. Um, two notes from your ninth. This, however, has a few problems associated with it. If I was going to play C, my seventh there, my nine, and my eleventh, we've got a slight problem here. And we come up against that interval. An octave plus a semitone, or a minor ninth known as as well. That can grate a bit. It's fine to have. You can actually get C7 with a flat 9, which has that interval in. But the other notes in between are kind of masking that slightly negative effect of that interval. So one solution is to sharpen the 11th, which is quite a common trick to make that 7 chord sound even more exploratory. So I've brought my 11th note up a semitone. Now the 11th, when you start wandering away from this scale, you think, oh, what's the 11? You're having to count 11 notes. You can think of the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th as well. If you go to 15, you end up where you started. So 13 is the highest. So you can put all of these notes, you can think of the 9th as the second, the 11th as the 4th, and the 13th as the 6th. But they're called those higher numbers because the 7th must be in place. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I like it, it's nice. 
However, there are seven notes there and I'm pretty sure I've only got five of them. So you're gonna have to start doing what's called voicings where you take various combinations of notes so you start losing a few of them. Now, the bass player will be using the root and the fifth. So you can immediately get rid of those in your chord. There's your five notes. Nice, four, five. So C9 could be this. You think, well, where's the C gone? Well, the bass player's got it. So I'm left with the third, that flat and seventh, and the ninth. So you can end up with these uh, shapes that are actually quite easy to play, but they're difficult to spot. You think, well, why is that? How is that C9? Because there's no reference point. Now these are called rootless uh, voicings or rootless inversions. Uh, and lots of them exist. And that, that's the beauty here is that you can create combinations. Well, many combinations. There's my C9, but I've added the 13th. Or I could have a C9 with a sharp 11. All sorts of things are possible. All those textures that I just played there, it's just using various degrees of that continuation of your scale, or not. Sometimes you can really overcook it and it can start getting a grating a little bit. Now there are other seven chords. Sometimes you see something like C7 sharp nine. So essentially what that is, is a C7 chord. The ninth is there, and you just raise it or bring it up a semitone. In jazz, we have raising, which is to bring up by a semitone, or lowering, which is to bring it down a semitone, so sharp or flat. All those conventions exist, and it's necessary to be aware of all of them. So C7 sharp nine. Lots of people know that as the Hendrix chord. So that is E7 sharp nine. Notice that the fifth isn't there in E. There's your fifth note in E. It isn't there. I've just got that, but I could put it in my bass if I wanted, just to firm that chord up a bit more. So real subtle differences there. You can get sevens with flat nines. That's what I was saying just now about that minus that minor ninth interval being a little bit grating. But if you've got other stuff in between, works well. Now that minor nine is nice to use in a minor key. So if I've got F minor, we have other things like half diminished and diminished and sixths and minor sixths, that sort of thing. Um, you've also got something called altered chords, which are, you know, that, that takes a little bit of explaining, but essentially what an altered chord is, is a dominant seventh initially. That's that, that voicing there. And the altered chords, the altered chord means that you can alter all of the other notes, your ninths, your elevenths, your thirteenths. So you could have something like this. There's your C alt. So you've got C7, there's your major third, flat and thirteenth, sharp nine. You could have that, you could put your flat nine in, you could put your sharp eleventh in. The combination is up to you really. I mean it's quite nice to have that seventh, flat and thirteenth with that dissonance in the middle. That's, that speaks alt quite nicely. So uh, we have also the half diminished is uh, minor seven with a flattened fifth. So if you know your scale in terms of the degrees, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, your C seven would be that, C minor seven would be that, 
C minor seven with a flattened fifth is that. Full diminished is where all the notes are separated by the same distance, if you will, on in terms of semitones. So every three semitones, and you end up coming back to where you started. Because it's an equal spacing, that means that C diminished, D sharp diminished, F sharp diminished, and A diminished are actually the same. It just depends what you've got in your bass. Because of that, because there are four diminished chords that are the same, actually there are only three different diminished chords in existence because there are 12 semitones and if you've got one that repeats every four that implies that there are two other groups of four. So if you don't know a diminished chord you can try and work out a diminished chord that you do know which is in the the which is the correct distance from your initial one so for example if I see C diminished but I don't know that I can put an A diminished down and put a C in the bass. The next thing really to do is to be able to work out all of these chords in inversions so that you can play a jazz standard without going like that. So Stuff like Autumn Leaves is a really good one to look at um, because it goes around what's known as the circle of fifths. C minor, F, B flat, E flat, A, D, G. C, F, B flat, E flat, A, D, G. It's kind of fifths all the way down with a tiny adjustment in the middle to make sure it all works and all comes back to itself. Now, in that regard, it is worth knowing um, about the perfect fifth interval and how we arrived at this. If we start with C, which I know you can't see, it's off camera. I'll go, for, well, I'll, tell you what, I'll do it here. C to G is a fifth. G to D is a fifth. D to A is a fifth. A to E is a fifth. E to B is a fifth. B, oh, hang on. Uh, oh, gotta have a black note there make it work. F sharp. That's why F sharp is the first sharp specified in a key signature. It's all to do with this fifths lark. Then F sharp to C sharp, C sharp to G sharp, G sharp to D sharp, D sharp to A sharp, A sharp to E sharp. Ooh, okay. We're back to a white note again. Now, when all of this was worked out, actually, when you got all the way around the circle of fifths, the last note was far too high, far too sharp. So it took a lot of jigging about. And this is basically a bit of a fudge job, this, the, the whole piano concept, the whole equal temperament it's known as. And so I had to shave a bit off each note to make it all fit. Um, so Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier is an example of a work containing 24 pieces, 12 major keys and 12 minor keys, demonstrating the fact that you could do this. So it took years and years and years, and it was people before him who were working it out. Uh, the Chinese were working it out, uh, and we had this thing where we were trying to make it all work, and then it all kind of came out in the wash about 500 years ago. And there we go, there is a little introduction to harmony, to that jazz harmony and how you find those chords. Uh, just as an aside, I forgot about the sixth chords. It's simply one, three, five, which is your major chord with a sixth added. C minor sixth isn't that, it's a C minor chord, but the sixth note stays the same. So like the ninth, the sixth is always the same. A good alternative to C major seven. The problem with the C major seven is that when you're improvising, you'll come up against this problem. Now a good alternative to a major seven is a six nine chord. It has a very similar sound, similar flavour, but because of the notes, you're far less likely to come up with any problems. So in the next section, I'll show you about improvising using right hand scales.